On July 23rd, 2019, the Coca-Cola Company reported second quarter financial results for the period ending June 30th, 2019. This video provides an update on the company's dividend safety using its most recent operating results. Before we begin, I invite you to subscribe to this channel and like this video, which will help more people discover SureDividend's investor education efforts. With that out of the way, let's dig into Coca-Cola's dividend safety. To begin, let's talk about Coca-Cola's business model. Coca-Cola was first founded in 1886 and has grown to become the world's largest beverage company. Coca-Cola products are found in more than 200 countries worldwide, and it serves more than 2 billion beverages every day. The company has a current market capitalization of $232 billion, with annual revenues in excess of $31 billion. Coca-Cola is one of the world's most popular dividend growth stocks. The company's current dividend yield is 3.1%. Moreover, Coca-Cola is a consistent dividend grower. In fact, the company has increased its annual dividend payment for 57 consecutive years. This qualifies Coca-Cola to be a member of the Dividend Aristocrats Index, a group of exclusive dividend stocks with 25 plus years of consecutive dividend increases. Coca-Cola is also a member of the Dividend Kings Index, a group of even more exclusive stocks with more than 50 years of consecutive dividend increases. Looking ahead, investors interested in owning Coca-Cola stock will likely have an interest in the company's current dividend safety. For the remainder of this video, we will assess Coca-Cola's dividend safety from four perspectives. It's dividend safety in the context of its current earnings, it's dividend safety in the context of its current free cash flow, it's dividend safety in the context of its recession performance, and it's dividend safety in the context of its current debt load. To begin, let's talk about Coca-Cola's dividend safety in the context of the company's current earnings. In the second quarter of fiscal 2019, Coca-Cola generated earnings per share of 63 cents, which compared favorably to the 61 cents of adjusted earnings per share in the same period a year ago. For context, Coca-Cola currently pays a quarterly dividend of $0.40 cents per share, which implies a payout ratio of 63% in the most recent quarter. Coca-Cola differs from most companies in that it doesn't pay a dividend in all four quarters of the year. The company pays dividends in April, July, October, and December. With two payments made in the fourth quarter of each year, Coca-Cola shareholders do not receive a dividend in the first quarter. For this section, we will look out over a longer time horizon to determine the safety of the company's dividend. Coca-Cola generated $2.12 of adjusted earnings per share over the past 12 months. The company distributed $1.57 of common share dividends during the same time period for a dividend payout ratio of 74%. Using earnings, Coca-Cola's dividend appears safe for the foreseeable future, though we do caution that the payout ratio is elevated over the long term. Many analysts believe that comparing a company's dividend payments to its free cash flow is a better method for assessing dividend safety. With that in mind, we will now compare Coca-Cola's current dividend payment to its free cash flow. Coca-Cola generated $3.7 billion of cash flow from operating activities in the second quarter of fiscal 2019 and spent $403 million on capital expenditures during the same time period for free cash flow of approximately $3.3 billion. The company distributed $1.7 billion of common share dividends during the same time period for a free cash flow dividend payout ratio of 52%. Looking out over a longer time horizon, our conclusion is the same. Coca-Cola generated $9.4 billion of cash flow from operating activities over the last 12 months and spent $1.5 billion on capital expenditures for free cash flow of $7.9 billion. The company distributed $6.7 billion of common share dividends during the same time period for a free cash flow dividend payout ratio of 85%. Using free cash flow results for the year, our conclusion for Coca-Cola's dividend safety is the same as when we used earnings. The company's dividend is currently well covered by free cash flow, though we do caution that the payout ratio is elevated over the long term. Companies do not cut their dividends in the good times. Instead, dividends are reduced when companies experience financial difficulties. Accordingly, this section will analyze Coca-Cola's current dividend safety in the context of the company's historical recession performance. We believe that the best way to measure a company's recession resiliency is by assessing its earnings per share performance during the financial crisis that occurred between 2007 and 2009. Coca-Cola's performance during this time period is shown here. Despite a slight decline in 2009, Coca-Cola's adjusted earnings per share increased 14% during the last recession. More importantly, the company's earnings still covered its dividend payment, and Coca-Cola continued its multi-decade streak of dividend increases. Because of this, we have little concerns about the company's ability to pay rising dividends during future economic downturns.
The last angle that we will use to assess Coca-Cola's current dividend safety is by looking at the company's current debt level. More specifically, we will see how much the company's weighted average interest rate would have to increase before its free cash flow would no longer cover its dividend payment. At the end of the second quarter of fiscal 2019, Coca-Cola had $32 billion of total debt outstanding. The company generated $236 million in interest expense during the second quarter for a weighted average interest rate of 2.9%. The following image shows how changes to Coca-Cola's weighted average interest rate would impact the company's dividend safety as measured by free cash flow. As you can see, Coca-Cola's weighted average interest rate would have to rise to above the 12.8% level before its dividend would no longer be covered by free cash flow. Because of this, we have little concern about the impact of the company's debt on Coca-Cola's dividend safety moving forward. Looking at over a longer time horizon, our conclusion is the same. For the last 12 months, Coca-Cola generated $916 million in interest expense for a weighted average interest rate of 2.9%, the same as before. The following image shows how changes to Coca-Cola's weighted average interest rate would impact the company's dividend safety as measured by free cash flow over the last 12 months. As you can see, Coca-Cola's weighted average interest rate would need to rise to above the 6.8% level before its dividend would no longer be covered by free cash flow. While this is lower than we would prefer, we have little concern about the impact of the company's debt on Coca-Cola's dividend safety moving forward. Thank you for watching today's video, which performed a deep dive on Coca-Cola's current dividend safety. We invite you to subscribe to this channel and like this video, which will help more people discover Sure Dividend's investor education efforts. If you're interested in learning more about our systematic approach to dividend growth investing, visit our website at www.suredividend.com.